Hello, everyone. In this episode, I'd like to try and demystify the painting options that we have in Blender for 3D painting our objects or texture projections onto our objects. This is in response to a question from one of my supporters, Joseph. Hello, Joseph. He says, hey, I've seen those new painting features inside Blender 3.2, but I, I'm a bit of a noob, so I don't really understand how to get there and the ins and outs of it. And could somebody please explain this in plain English? And this is my attempt to do that. So the question also was, is this a replacement or alternative for Substance Painter? And can I use this to texture my objects in Dash Studio? And the answer is kind of a yes and no. It's not quite as simple and straightforward as that, but I'll show you how to get started with these painting tools. So before we look at Blender 3.2, just as an aside, there are two types of painting modes in Blender. One is vertex paint and the other is texture painting. So the first one, vertex painting, means you apply color to the vertices of an object. So no matter how high res or how low res your object is, you're going to apply paint information onto these outside edges. So wherever your object has a vertex, that is where paint information can reside in addition to everything else. So that means that you're going to have a very high resolution object to hold all that information that you're going to store on a per pixel or per, per vertex basis. So in this case, my object, my default cube has exactly eight vertices. So that is not a lot of resolution. If I wanted to jack that up, I'd have a much higher resolution object. But that also means the performance while I'm doing it is going to suck at one point. So I'm going to show you an example of resolution versus performance trade-off. So the other option is to have this object and have it UV unwrapped and then have a texture applied to a shader. The shader is then applied to the object and that means your object can be very low resolution but your texture can be as high resolution as you like and therefore resolve more of your paint strokes. I, it sounds a little abstract when I talk about it like that, but let me show you an, a concrete example here. So I'm going to go and get rid of my default cube with shift A. I'm going to go and bring in an icosphere. And that is more, that has more resolution than my cube, but it still hasn't got a lot. So I'm going to leave it there. GZ1 brings that up to the floor here. I'm going to show you vertex paint first. And this is uh, related to the new painting features. So right now my object is uh, gray or white, essentially, I'm going to go over here and switch into vertex paint mode. And that changes the interface a little bit. And it lets me paint directly on my object. So this is now applying color to the outsides or to the vertices of my object. If I do nothing else, left click and drag on it, I see nothing is happening. And that's because I'm painting with white, essentially. If I change this to a different color, say something like a blue, and I left click and drag over my object, I barely see anything happening. Only here where this vertex is, is something applied. So if I go and try something in the middle on my polygon here, nothing happens. But as I go onto a vertex, this is where those bits and pieces are being colored in. But it's not really anything that looks great, I have to say. So in order for any resolution or any paint stroke to be resolved, I'd have to have a much higher resolution object. Well, let's make that happen. I'm going to go down here to this little wrench icon, and I'm going to go and click it and add a modifier to it. In my case, a subdivision surface modifier. And that now increases the resolution of my object as soon as I apply it. This has got more resolution, but really to crank that up, I'm going to have to add maybe three levels here. Let's do that. Let's do three levels. And then I'll go and apply that modifier. So apply. And then that subdivision information is baked in and I can go back to painting my object, hopefully. So to make it clear, I'm going to go and use a different color. Instead of blue, I might use something like pink. And then I'll go and maybe also make my brush radius a little bit smaller and go and left click and drag all over my object. And I can see there's more resolution now. So I can, I can see something better is happening here. But I can still see this isn't fantastic. So once again, to, to really draw something with detail, I'd have to go and make that even more high resolution. Blender has this way of showing you the statistics of the object over here. If you select statistics, you can see how many triangles and faces and edges and vertices your object has. So we, we've been talking 7,000 triangles. The Genesis figure has about 80,000. So we currently have seven and a half thousand triangles. I think I'd need about a hundred times more to 
get any meaningful resolution out of this. So let's see what happens if I go and add my modifier again here, subdivision surface, and I'm going to go and click this once, twice. So another three levels here, and I'll have... And now we're talking about half a million triangles. Again, not quite enough. I'll go and increase this one more time. Now I'm having about two million. So let's let's leave it like that. Let's leave it like that. I have to go and apply this. And then as I go and use yet another color, maybe something green here, I can go and left click and drag on my object. But the performance is really, really bad. So my stroke barely resolves. But if I look closely, as my computer starts to respond again, I do have really good resolution. But, you know, uh, that's just not something I could use for, for painting. It's it just, it really doesn't work all that well. Now, granted, you can probably get away with something low resolution, but if you wanted to hold something like actual texture data, you have to have something at least as high as this, otherwise it just won't resolve. So that is partly the problem with vertex painting. It works on low resolution objects, but as the object gets a high resolution, it's going to be a problem to deal with. Texture painting, on the other hand, doesn't have those limitations. Let me show you how to do that. I'll go and in fact create a brand new scene here and do the same thing again. I'm going to get rid of my default cube. I'm going to bring in my icosphere here and I'm going to leave it exactly at this resolution. So it is GZ1 to bring that up. Currently it is super low resolution and like I said with vertex paint only these points here would hold any meaningful color information. Now let's use texture paint instead. So that's another mode up here texture paint. This was the first one. This is now texture paint. If I select that I see that my sphere turns pink. Pink that's not a color in this case. Pink is just Blender's way of saying, hey, there's a texture missing. That's, if ever you see this, it means Blender says, hey, there should be a texture here and I don't currently don't have one. And uh, that's a problem. So that leads me on to something a little bit more complex. We need to have three things to start painting on a texture. We need to have that object UV unwrapped, which it already is, which is, that's good news. Then we need to have a texture and the texture needs to go into a material that is being applied to the object. And if we work in reverse, we can use the material first, then create a texture, plug that in and then start drawing. So I'm afraid that is that is what we need to do. Um, yeah, that's just no, no easy way of saying this. So let's head over to the materials tab down here. That's this little globe icon here. And it says there's no material applied here. So let's go make that happen. Hit new. And that will make ourselves a material. You can call it something like, say, my mat, just so that I know what that is. And in order to plug a texture into this, let's go and switch over to the shading layout here. I find that a little bit easier to deal with because the object that is selected already presents itself with the shader down here. And that's the BSDF shader that's created by default when we make a new material. I need to plug my texture into here, to this base channel. So that means I have to add a node here so that I can plug the node in, but that's not the texture, that's just the node. So Shift A, and we say texture, image texture. And that'll make that node that I can go and plug into here. There. Now the object turns black, and that means, well, we still don't have a texture, but we at least we have a channel that could take a texture. So if I had one, I could open it. I don't, so I'm going to go and create myself a brand new texture, and that is happening in this window over here. This is the UV unwrapping that we already have in place, which is really nice. I can just go and leave that, and I'll just click New here. As I do that, Blender is going to create a new image for me. I can call it something like my texture, for example, and I can give it a size. So I might go and use 2048 by 2048. I don't really need an alpha channel here. And I think I'd like to start with something white or maybe like a medium gray. Let's do that. Medium gray. Perfect. As I do that, as I hit OK, this texture is created here. Now I can go and zoom out, but it isn't part of the image texture node yet. And now that I've made it, I can go and just pick it from here. There it is, my texture. And as soon as I click on that, I can see that my sphere now turns gray. That's the color that I've picked here as I made the texture. So I needed to do that, but now I can go back to my layout and I'm in texture draw and I can go and 
left click and drag on my object and then go and paint. And you can see that even with a low resolution object, I have a very high resolution paint stroke there and my performance doesn't suck, which is, which is good news. So I can go and now change the color up here to something else, like maybe blue. And I can change the brush stroke and all that. So that's, you know, that's something that we'll, we'll explore that at the end. But yeah, this is in essence how you would do texture painting versus vertex painting. Now, when we talk about uh, textures that we want to apply on an object, it is often not done with colorful paint strokes like this. Usually we go and perform this with something like images. Uh, you may have like high resolution images from sites like 3DSK and you want to create the character out of that or maybe projection paint whatever's on the texture onto the object and that is happening that can be done in both vertex painting as well as texture painting so the tools are going to be the same I thought I'll show you that while I'm while I'm here and I'll just you know painted this white so that's that'll that'll do here I'll go for that I'm going to go and pick a texture here on the texture menu you need a texture to be able to paint with so that can be either something you want to apply to your brush stroke or something that you want to stencil out so like stencil as an overlay and then rub onto the object that's what I'm going to use so you, we don't currently have any textures I can pick so I need to create a new one think of this as a node so that's not really it doesn't hold an image yet the texture can then be tiled or whatnot. I want to use the stencil version here, stencil, but it means I, I don't have an image yet that I want to load into that. So I'm going to go and open that. That's this little icon here at the top. Show texture in textures tab. If I go and click that on the bottom right, I can see this window pop open. That's that little checkerboard icon. And this allows me to open a thing that I want to use to apply onto my 3D object. So it's technically it's called a texture as well, but it's a little confusing because we've heard the word texture already with the thing that I added to my shader. So that's a different thing. Technically, this is just an image that I'm picking that I'm rubbing on, but we're going to call it a texture here as well, just to make things a little bit more confusing. So I'll just go and open an image that I have on my on my desktop here. It's not really meant for texturing, but I'll just pick this one here, a skirt uh, render that I've that I've got here. So I'll go and pick that. And then that's where it is. Look, this is where it where it appears. And as soon as I hover over my viewport, I've got it, I've got it sitting here. This is an overlay essentially that I can move around with the right click. So if I right click and drag, I can move that picture. I can also scale it by holding shift and then right click and then dragging the mouse. If I do that and hit X then I go and scale it into one direction. Y would scale it in the other direction. I'll go and do this. Right click it over my object. I just go position the object the way I want, maybe like this. I'll go and right click the object to about here. And then with my brush here, I can left click and drag over the part of the texture that I want to transfer to my 3D object. So imagine this is like, you know, skin and I'm transferring to a body or you have a logo and you're transferring it to a t-shirt or something. Be as accurate as you want to be. Right click to move that out of the way. And there it is. So now we have transferred that texture to my 3D object. And it's, it's in fairly good condition here in regards to resolution. So that's fairly nice. And that's how you do that. The principle is the same with vertex paint. So you can use the same texture painting mechanism in vertex painting, which we're going to go back to in a second. Um, and it'll be a lot less resolution or a lot less performant. That's kind of the, the problem. And it has its pros, of course, because if I were to do something to this object here, if I go and say, hey, I'd like more resolution to this object that I've just painted. If I go and do that, then I will destroy the UVs and therefore I need to repaint my texture. My texture isn't going to work anymore. So what I've just painted here here is now part of the 2D image that I've created as part of the texture that I've plugged in there. If I change any aspect of resolution or UV mapping of my object, that gets destroyed. So that's the big plus on vertex paint because its information is stored in the vertices. So if you just double the vertex amount, then the thing that you've drawn onto your initial object will stay in place. So that's, that's kind of nice. You can make these changes and not lose that information. Thankfully, Blender isn't all that bad. So if I go and add a subdivision surface modifier to my sphere now, it'll actually retain all this information. 
even as soon as I apply it, it's still all there. So that is kind of nice how Blender handles that. If I were to go and re-UV the object, that would be a different matter. So let me just go try that in UV editing. This is my current UV map, and there's there's a lot of wasted space on here. So if I go and UV, and then I go unwrap, and then I go smart UV project, I'll see a better UV map like this. But that, of course, means that wherever I've painted my image texture on, that's going to now be destroyed. So if I go back into texture painting, I can see that, well, there's just this, this, this is all broken up. So this is what can happen if you make any geometric changes to the object afterwards. So you probably don't want to do that. But um, yeah, if you leave that, if you do the UVs first and then you do pe texture painting, you're probably in a, in a better position than, you know, if you were if you were to not do that. The new features that you've heard about that uh, have been announced in Blender 3.2 I'll go and create a new scene here and I'll go and maybe remove my cube and add a grid here with let's say a hundred divisions to make it a little bit more um, what's the word give it a little more resolution like so the new painting features that you've heard of they are part of the sculpt tools so they are over here under sculpt mode and you can either drag this out and then see some descriptions here or you can go and click shift space and while you hold that down this list comes up and there's one down here that's the paint brush so paint and smear you've got those two and if you select paint then you can do the same as i showed you before so pick a color and then go and apply a paint stroke on this and it works fine and it's compatible with the uh, regular vertex paint. It's just the same tools in a different place. So, you know, you can do that. And there's, there's funky new features that have been added here under brush. You can see all these things like wet mix. You can, you can do kind of oil paint effects that we usually only have in Clip Studio Paint or in Painter or in Photoshop. So you can do all that inside of the sculpt tools now. But make no mistake about it, it's not like a brand new feature. If you switch back over to Vertex Paint, this is still Vertex Paint. So I can go and, you know, pick a different color here now and just do this. So it's, it's you know, the same tools, just in a different place. And sadly, I think if I go to Brush here, I don't have all these fancy new options that have been introduced inside the sculpt menu so that's one of those things that makes blender not very comfortable to newcomers you find the same thing in multiple places but you have to go to a specific place to unlock them all but then in the next version it's all kind of over the place so it's you know it's one of those things so yes there is a way to turn this vertex paint information I'll go back into sculpt mode here. There's a way to bring this vertex paint information over into a texture map. So if you wanted to see what you're doing here inside Dash Studio, then you'd have to go and bake this out as a texture. But I'm not going to go into that here because that's a that's a different matter. This is kind of just getting you started with the paint tools. Let me just go and undo all this and just show you how you can also go and use a texture here in vertex paint mode in order to brush that onto your object so that happens once again in texture here make a new texture i wanted mine stenciled but you can also use any of the others if you wanted to have the text repeated if you want to draw a pattern of flowers and sprinkle flowers or whatever that's just like you know i wanted mine stenciled and then over on the bottom right here with this icon i can go and pick myself an image i'll go and pick one like this here just a, a render I did and then if I go and adjust my object say like you know, looking at it from the top with the 7 on the numpad I can go and right drag my object here into position shift right click to scale it and then maybe just go and draw out the head so just left click and drag over the part that you want to transfer so if you do this with textures that are supposed to be on a human body, for example, you would use the orthographic views and then have a projection on there and just make sure the size is correct. Maybe we can discuss that in another video. There we go. Right, drag that over. And you can see it's worked. I just don't have enough resolution in my 3D object here. So once again, in order to increase that, add a subdivision surface modifier or subdivide it any other way. I'm going to go and add maybe three levels here and then I'm going to apply it. 
so that all that is locked in. And now if I go and do the same thing again, drag out my head again just underneath here i can see performance is starting to suck so it's it's difficult for me to transfer that into vertex paint data but blender does it it's just you know i don't know what computer you'd need for that to for that to work properly i know that other applications like zbrush are way better at handling stuff like this so it could be that it's just blender not being very comfortable in doing that it's probably more designed for things like ID maps, or maybe they're working on something, or I'm doing something wrong, or my computer really needs to be replaced. I really don't know. Just as an aside here, if I have a look at the statistics, I have 1.2 million triangles now, which is not a lot. Uh, it's kind of a 1 million pixel resolution that I'm talking about here. So it isn't, it isn't a lot, uh, but it was enough to transfer my image in relatively high res but you can see that when i zoom in this is not what my, my render looks like so in order to really have good resolution in vertex paint you really have to subdivide this even more so there we go those are the painting tools in a nutshell and how to get started with them i hope this was useful i mean you can see it's a powerful tool i haven't worked a great deal with it but it's something that i'm trying to get into more there are also add-ons that you can get that will let you use full pbr painting this way inside blender they're like 30 40 bucks on the blender market there's several of them out there and i've yet to test them but it'll be great to have that sort of functionality directly in blender with the right materials i hope this was useful and i hope i will see you next next time. Take care. Bye-bye.